Okay, so if you are taking any sort of algebra course, this is a pretty typical type of homework problem that you're going to run into. So what we're going to do here is solve this linear equation. We're going to solve this equation for m. And if you think you could do this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Again, if you're taking any sort of uh, algebra course, I'm talking about things like pre-algebra, algebra 1, algebra 2, college algebra. Learning how to solve equations is essential. And I'm going to get into the spirit of things here by doing this problem on some notebook paper. So it just kind of seems realistic. But uh, I'm going to show you the exact steps to uh, solve this particular problem. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you the solution here in just one moment, and then we're going to go through this thing step by step. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love teaching mathematics. And through those years, I've kind of really learned this one primary thing, and that is all students can be successful in mathematics if they want to learn math. Now, if you uh, are struggling in math and you don't want to learn math, guess what? No matter what I tell you, you're not going to learn math because you don't want to learn math. But if you do want to learn math and you have some encouragement and most importantly, access to great math instruction, instruction that you understand clear and comprehensive, well, then there is hope you can absolutely learn this stuff. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test, that you're studying for, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, um, the ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam, the Alex exam, uh, anything with math on it. Or if you homeschool mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. Um, I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes uh, in the description as well. It's very, very important that you have notes to study from. So if you don't have notes right now, start taking notes, but you can use my notes in the meantime. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Now, if you are a subscriber, you're probably, um, and you've watched some of my past videos, you're probably used to my green back, uh, background. It's like a chalkboard which I uh, love using as well because it makes me feel like I'm teaching on a chalkboard. But here we are talking about homework. So we don't do our homework on a chalkboard. We do it on a regular three ring binder notebook or something like this. So let's go ahead and get into this problem now. And I'm going to show you the solution in just one second. And here we go. All right, so the problem is 2 times m minus 3 is equal to 4m plus 10. Again, a very standard type of algebra homework problem. The answer is m is equal to negative 8. Now, if you're doing your homework, right, this would just be one of several problems uh, that you would do. But guess what? You have to check uh, each problem, check your solution for each problem, and you just you know continue to practice. Now, if you got this problem right, that's very good. Matter of fact, for this problem, I'm going to give you a happy face in A+, plus, a 100%, and a few stars to celebrate your awesomeness in algebra. Okay, so nice job. But again, this is only one problem. And I kind of want to uh, make this analogy here. If you are trying to get great at basketball, here is our basketball little court here. If you shoot and you make the ball once, right, and say it's a perfect swish type of uh, shot, and you're like, oh, boy, look at that. I am so good at shooting basketballs. I just made this one shot. So therefore, every time I shoot, I'm going to, uh, you know, get the ball in the basket. Now, is that true? No, it's not. And that's why we have to continue to do a variety of different homework problems. So what you can't do or what you don't want to do is just go like, all right, I'm going to do this one problem and I'm going to get this right. Oh, I got this right. So therefore, I don't have to finish my homework. That is kind of a classic psychology that gets students in trouble. And I'm pretty sure I did a lot of that. Matter of fact, not pretty sure. I absolutely know I did a ton of that in elementary school, middle school, and uh, high school. Really didn't start taking um, academics more serious until I had to, which was college. All right. So uh, irrespective of what level you're at in school, you got to do your homework. All right. That's all, the only way you're going to get better at it. So don't get overconfident just because you get one or two of the homework prompts correct. But let's go ahead and take a look, uh, take a look at the solution to this problem right now. All right, so I kind of have it all pre-written out here so I can kind of talk about it. So we have 2 times m minus 3 is equal to 4m plus 10. So what do we do first? Well, let's stand back and understand what the big picture is. Uh, so uh, 
the big picture is. That's what I wanted to say. Well, we're trying to solve this equation for m. We're trying to get to m equals some number. Now, of course, I just showed you what the solution is, but how do we do that? Well, m, notice, is on the left-hand side, and then we have some number on the right-hand side. So as we kind of shuffle these uh, variable terms and numbers around, what we want to do is get all the variables on the left-hand side and get all of our numbers on the right-hand side. So it's kind of like we're reorganizing and directing all these terms and numbers so they can get on their appropriate side of the equation symbol here. Then we're going to finally solve these nice basic, uh, what we call one-step equations at the very end. All right, so what do you do first? Well, anytime you have an equation, especially a linear equation, and you have parentheses, something like this, this is a signal for you to do what we call the distributive property, okay? You absolutely got to know what the distributive property is, and that means what it says, you're going to distribute this number, okay, that's outside of a sum or difference. In this case, we have a difference, right? But if this was a plus, we would have a sum. And you're going to multiply that number on the outside times whatever's on the inside. You're going to multiply it by this, and you're going to multiply it by this. Okay? So, and when we do that, we're going to have 2 times m, which of course is 2m, and then 2 times this negative 3, which is negative 6. So that is your first move uh, when uh, you're dealing with a linear equation. You look for situations where you have to apply the distributive property. Not Now, uh, not every single problem you're going to have um, something like this where you're going to have sums and differences where you have to do this uh, distributive property, but when you have to do it, it's one of the first things that you need to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. So here I have 2m minus 6 is equal to 4m plus 10. Now, one thing I want to say is that when you're doing your homework or quizzes or tests, it doesn't make a difference, you want to use uh, whatever lines are available. So on your homework, obviously you don't want to be using like printer paper uh, where you know you're trying to you know be nice and neat, but it's difficult because what ends up happening is you're kind of like writing and then maybe you can't get these things nice and parallel. But obviously if you're using college rule paper like what I'm using here, all right, be nice and neat, all right? Neatness is critical. That's why you want to use uh, pencil and you want to use the lines on your paper. So you don't want to just get sloppy and go real fast. You want to create habits of neatness and organization. All right, and you're going to just take things one step at a time. So right now, we have 2m minus 6 is equal to 4m plus 10. So what do we need to do? Well, remember, we want to get all our variables on this side of the equation and all of our numbers on this side. So we're going to have to take some steps to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this negative 6. If you see here, this negative 6 is not on the side of the equation that I want it to be. All these numbers need to be over here. So I get this, how can I get this negative 6 to go on this other side of the equation easy? Okay. If I want to get rid of a negative 6 on the left-hand side, all I can do or all I need to do is add a 6 to it. Okay, because a negative 6 plus a 6 makes that uh, negative 6 disappears, right? This just becomes 0. But here is one of the main concepts of solving equations in algebra. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, whatever step you want to do, and you can do anything you want, you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide, more or less. But whatever you do to one side of the equation, you absolutely have to do to the other side of the equation. All right, so you want to show this step, you know, in a very explicit manner, just like so. And I'm going to recommend working it in a column manner, like so. There is another way you could write this like plus 6 right here, but I would not recommend that. So you're going to go ahead and show this step. We're going to add 6 to both sides of the equation. We're going to get that number on the right-hand side. And then you're going to just be thinking adding down, okay? So 2m plus nothing here is just 2m. So I'm going to write that 2m here because I know negative 6 plus 6 is 0. Okay, we don't need to write the 0 there. It just kind of disappears. And then over here, I got 4m plus nothing is 4m. And then 10 plus 6. Now, you're going to add 6 to both sides. So if you have a number here, you're going to put that number underneath that number. So 10 plus 6 is, of course, 16. Okay, so at this point, what you don't want to do is start working on this. All right, I'm going to show you... The, 
uh, which is a kind of a common mistake. Students get you know pretty excited about taking a step, and then they kind of like start working a next step on the result of taking one step. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is rewrite the res uh, the results of one step down here. Okay, this way you can read what's going on, and more importantly, your teacher can read through and say, "Oh, look at this. They know exactly what they're doing." They must be watching that guy on YouTube because, uh, boy, they are spectacular in algebra. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, continue on. So now I'm looking on the left-hand side. Do I have any more numbers to move to the right-hand side? Nope. I'm pretty happy with all my numbers over here. Okay, so now I have to address the variables. Okay, I don't have all the variables on the left-hand side. So I've got to get this 4M uh, moved over to the left-hand side. So how do we do that? Easy. All we have to do is subtract a 4m from both sides of the equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, you can see I have, uh, have that step uh, listed right here or, or written right there. So we're going to add down. So a positive 2m plus a negative 4m. You've got to be very careful with positive negative uh, negative numbers here. Is a negative 2m, and then we have 4m minus m is zero, so we don't have to write that zero. And then we add down here, 16 plus zero is 16. So there we go. And right here, we're down to negative 2m is equal to 16. I want to um, make sure you understand something. This is a nice, simple, what we call one-step equation. There's only literally one step we need to take to solve this equation. But this equation is equivalent to this equation right here. Okay, This is just a shorter version of it. All right, which is in fact, let's kind of go all the way up here uh, to the very, very top. Okay, this equation, all right, right here is equivalent to this equation. These are all equivalent uh, to one another. We just, we're just basically taking this equation and write it in a simpler and uh, easier manner. Okay, we're kind of just whittling it down. And when you look at your work, when you're solving linear equations, it kind of looks like an ice cream comb. You just kind of take one step all the way down to get your solution, okay? But you need to understand that this is equivalent to this, which is in fact equivalent to this equation. And now we're ready to go ahead and do the finale to this problem, which is to get our solution. So we have negative 2m is equal to 16. How do we solve for m? Easy, all we need to do is divide both sides of the equation by negative two. So whatever this number is, this is what we call a coefficient. Negative 2m, we're just going to divide both sides of the equation by this same value. So negative 2m divided by negative 2m is a positive 1. Okay, so this uh, variable m really is a 1 in front of it, but we're not going to write 1m, we're just going to simply write m, and that's what we're looking for. And we have 16 divided by negative 2, which of course is negative 8. And there you go, there is the solution to this equation. Now, before you tackle, you know, a problem of this level, and I would say this is a pretty, you know, of course, typical type of algebra problem, but there's multiple steps involved here, right? So before you learn this, okay, you have to master these uh, first step or one-step equations, okay, these basic equations, at which, of course, you need to be familiar with positive, negative numbers, fractions, etc. okay? So if any of these things are... You know, if you're looking at this, you're like, boy, I don't think I even really understand how to do a problem like this or, you know, how to, uh, you know, add variables to both sides of the equation and something like so. Then that's a pretty good indication that you need to go back and review linear equations. But guess what? There is hope for you, right? Anytime you know what you don't know, that is a good thing. OK, that's like, oh. Uh, you know, the worst thing you could do is like, I don't even know where to start, right? Because then you, there's no like direction to uh, go work on, right? But if you don't understand something, make note of it. Like, hey, I don't get this. And there's a couple um, logical things you need to do. One, you need to go back to your teacher if you're in some sort of class and be like, hey, teacher, I don't understand this. And your teacher will say, hey, uh, you got to do this. But if you were, are watching my videos and you're kind of working independently, what you can do is uh, the following, right? If you want to really learn linear equations, one, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel on linear equations, but you probably want kind of a more formal uh, approach, right? Uh, because there is a lot of things uh, to know, kind of like the basics, the foundations to uh, solving linear equations. So I would suggest uh, something like my pre-algebra course, which you can find at my math help program. 
Okay, but if this little video helps you out, for, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.